the yuan is going to replace the dollar as the reserve currency, or is it? Now, I think this is one of the biggest misconceptions many people have when we think of the dollarization. We believe that China's agenda is about dethroning the dollar and pushing the yuan up as the number one currency. But what if China is not after the reserve currency status? What if it just simply wants to de-dollarize the world? So just recently, Dr. Doom himself, Noriel Rubini, wrote a not-so-shocking article in the Financial Times titled A Bipolar Currency Regime Will Replace the Dollar's Exorbitant Privilege. And it goes on to make three main points. One, the dollar will lose its exorbitant privilege. Two, the world will be split into two geopolitical spheres, one surrounding the United States and the other will be China. And the most shocking claim is how we will have a bipolar currency regime and not a unipolar or even a multipolar future. Now, he believes the world will rearrange itself around the two currencies, right? The US dollar and the Chinese yuan. But does China really want to take the reserve currency throne? Yes, having the world reserve currency really brings with it tremendous advantages, right? You get to borrow tons of money at very low rates. You can print money with little immediate consequences to save your economy, and you can deploy financial sanctions on a country that misbehave, right? You are now the economic big brother. But there are a ton of downsides to becoming number one, and we'll quickly see how China probably doesn't want the yuan to become the world reserve currency. And let's start this conversation by agreeing on one thing, right? Currencies are not good long-term stores of value. Can we at least agree on that? Even the official inflation numbers of 5-10% to tells us that saving US dollars, yuan or euros to build wealth is a crazy idea, right? And let's realize that currencies today, they are simply mediums of exchange. A means of convenience to transact and transfer value from one seller to another, from one country to another. And once we view currencies as just a medium of exchange, everything starts to change. Now, the problem with a reserve currency is that everyone in the world needs to use it for transactions. If you need to buy commodities like oil, gold, or wheat, you need to gather a pile of dollars, right? Because over 60% of the world's debt is denominated in dollars, now there's a constant demand for dollars to pay off bondholders. Now, this puts an extreme amount of pressure on the United States to keep churning out tons of dollars to meet the demand. Yes, a big part is from America's inability to balance the books and its crazy deficit spending habits. But another part is because by design, the system needs more dollars to float around the world as a medium of exchange to facilitate trade, right? So I want us to visualize the dollar as a currency that has to keep inflating away and the money supply has to keep expanding to keep up with the world economy. Now, normally in a perfect scenario, the dollar supply should keep pace with global economic growth, right? But nothing is perfect, guys. And as we all know, the US government and the Federal Reserve lost control of the situation. And we just need to flash back to 2008 and 2020 when they printed up billions and trillions of dollars to save the US economy at the expense of the world. Now, they misused the reserve currency of the world to save themselves. They didn't practice proper stewardship. And now things have gotten from bad to worse, especially with all the sanctions on Russian reserves. But if the Chinese were to take over the reserve currency, there is no guarantee that they won't lose control of the steering wheel as well. Human nature is still human nature. There's always that temptation of greed and abuse. Now, I believe the Yuan will take market share from the US dollar and rise further as an alternative reserve currency. And there's a lot of pushback about how this is possible, right? And the big one is how China must relinquish their currency controls and make its exchange rate more flexible. However, Dr. Doom himself mentioned how the US has also doomed their dollar's appeal with their own form of capital controls. This includes financial sanctions against its rivals, restrictions to inward investment in many national security sensitive sectors and firms, and even secondary sanctions against friends who violate the primary ones. And we just need to look at all the tax sanctions on China, plus the secondary sanctions slap on Chinese companies. Remember that stupid spy balloon incident a week ago? The one where America scrambled F-22 fighter jets to take it down? Well, America has now sanctioned six Chinese tech companies for supporting spy balloon programs. And these sanctions normally include being locked out of the US dollar system. And this essentially is the weaponization of the US dollar as the reserve currency. Now, Rubini believes that it is not necessary for China to remove their currency controls to overtake the dollar. In other words, 
the US has handicapped themselves with the sanctions on Russia. And according to him, there's a lot of market share that Chinese yuan can steal from the dollar. Now, America's share of the global GDP has halved to 20% since the start of the world war, but still accounts for at least two-thirds of all currency transactions. And this is important because it shows the relative imbalance between the size of the US economy and how much control the dollar has over the world. Now, in contrast, China's global share of GDP was around 18%, but their share of global reserves is less than 3%. And as a global payments currency, the yuan share on the SWIFT system is slowly climbing up, but it is still barely above 2%. So you can see how much room there is for the yuan to grow, and it's not necessary for China to snatch the reserve currency title, right? In fact, it could backfire on the Chinese economy. Now, remember that China sees their currency as a way to do business, while the United States sees the dollar as a tool to control the world and impose foreign policy. So there's a fundamental difference here that we have to appreciate, guys. And this is why it's likely China's agenda is purely the dollarization and not a push for hegemony. In fact, I would say that the dollarization is simply a side effect of China trying to secure their own economy from the West. And let's understand how detrimental having the reserve currency status is for China. The burden they will have to deal with might not really be worth it. And the problem the dollar has now is being trapped in what we call Triffin's Dilemma. It's basically being caught between a rock and a hard place. Now the US has to keep running huge current account deficits to keep the game of musical chairs going, right? And this means America is forced in a sense to be more of a consumer economy. They now have to import more than they export because the world is hungry for dollars. Because if they don't, then there'll be a dollar shortage for the world. And we know what that leads to multiple currency crises around the world. And as Dr. Doom states, the current system makes emerging market economies financially and economically vulnerable to changes in US monetary policy driven by domestic factors such as inflation. But there's also another problem. Running deficits in the short term might be great for the US. After all, you can just print up pieces of paper to buy real goods and commodities, right? But in the long term, the expanding money supply will erode the value of the US dollar, especially when the Federal Reserve loses control of its monetary policy like back in 2020. And that's why we have an inflation crisis today with rates rising non-stop. Now, the reserve currency status is one reason why the US moved away from being a net producer to becoming a consumer economy, right? China cannot afford to have this. We know China is the world's factory and they have a population of 1.4 billion people to employ, right? That's why the Chinese yuan needs to be controlled and suppressed to make their exports cheap. They have to remain a net exporter to the world to keep their economy afloat. They just have too many mouths to feed, guys. Being the number one reserve currency is counterproductive to China. Now, the yuan isn't here to replace the dollar because it doesn't have to. Better to be number two or number three and enjoy the best of both worlds. Now, once again... The US is focused on control, while China is focused on trade, so their agendas are quite different. And we know that the world is splitting into two factions, right? Dr. Doom himself, he believes the bipolar regime will take over the current world order. And if we look at the Chinese yuan as a strong alternative to the dollar and not the replacement, then everything starts to make more sense, right? And this is where many of us tend to get things wrong. We believe China wants a total control of the world monetary system, but I don't think that's the case at all. We cannot afford to think in extremes. Now, the role of the Chinese Yuan is likely to be an alternative currency for the world, especially for the BRICS nations and countries afraid of the dollar, right? Let's take President Xi's recent visit to Saudi Arabia, for example. Yes, he proposed using the Shanghai exchange to trade oil and gas using the Chinese Yuan, but this is more of an option to diversify their holdings away from the dollar than a total replacement. Because if some trade flows away from the petrodollar system into the yuan, it gives China two clear advantages, right? Firstly, it allows them to shed more US dollar reserves and treasuries because they can now buy oil using their national currency. And by reducing dollar-denominated assets, they are sanction-proofing themselves. Now, secondly, it promotes the yuan further as a medium of exchange. So countries could stop how more yuan which will eventually flow back into China to consume more Chinese goods and services, right? So it's great for manufacturing as well. And that's why it's likely that China's agenda probably isn't to replace the dollar as the world reserve currency, 
but they just want more bilateral trade to protect against sanctions and more de-dollarization in general. And because there are currency controls on the yuan, which is necessary for China's economy, this makes it less likely for the world to issue debt in the currency. And this puts a ceiling on how much the Chinese yuan could propagate around the world, at least for now. And remember that over 60% of foreign debt is issued in US dollars, and this creates a consistent demand for dollars year after year, propping up the demand for the greenbacks. Now, China doesn't have that, and I don't think they want that burden either. So let's stop looking at the yuan as some magical replacement for the US dollar, right? But realize that China's real agenda might simply be to de-dollarize the world in general and protect their own economy from Western sanctions, right? From the Western financial system. And let's examine China's move to promote the yuan as an alternative currency. Now, what we are seeing is China taking a grassroots approach to push the yuan out more as an international medium of exchange, right? It's more about offering countries an option to conduct trade outside of the dollar than to really replace it. Now, the Belt and Road Initiative of the BRI is a clear example of how China is going around the developing world to win over support and by proxy encourages the use of the Chinese yuan in their commerce and trade. Now, the BRI is an ambitious infrastructure project that aims to connect Europe, Africa, and China together to facilitate global trade in the East, right? And at the heart of the project is to make trading with China easier and that also means transacting in the Yuan. Now, a great example is how the BRI developed the border town of Botan in northern Laos. They brought jobs back, they built skyscrapers and made the Chinese Yuan the main currency of trade. And as China continues with this infrastructure project in Central Asia and Africa, this will slowly take market share away from the dollar and effectively slowly de-dollarize the towns and the cities along the BRI. Now, the second way China is doing this is with their swap lines. China's central bank is competing with the Federal Reserve. They're extending swap lines to the rest of the world. Now, swap lines are essentially agreements between two countries to exchange currencies with each other. Now, this is especially important for emerging markets because they need access to a global currency to access a bigger pool of goods and services. And that's why we had the waves of currency crisis in 2022. Countries back then, they sold off their local currencies to buy dollars and because everything was priced in dollars, right, they had no choice but to do that. And over the last decade or so, China has entered into bilateral currency swap agreements with 41 countries exceeding 3.5 trillion yuan. And what China is doing is saying, hey, if you're in a spot of trouble and you need liquidity to access our markets, we can help you out. And this allows countries to really survive any short-term currency shocks without devaluing their local currency, right? It keeps their inflation rate stable. They can exchange their currency for yuan to access Chinese goods during an emergency and then exchange back when things are more stable down the road. However, the Federal Reserve only has standing swap arrangements with selected central banks, including the Bank of Japan, the ECB, and the Bank of England. So if more countries use these yuan swap lines, you will take away market share from the dollar. It means more bilateral trade will be done with China, allowing their economy to grow further. But what about gold, guys? That's the trillion dollar question we all have. Will China one day pack the yuan to their gold reserves and remove their capital controls? Now, isn't the point of gold back yuan ultimately to replace the US dollar? Now, if China does pack their currency to gold, it will likely be just to improve bilateral trade between central banks and countries, right? According to BNP Paribas, gold is necessary to inject confidence into China's currency if they want to develop a petrol yuan. Now, in fact, a gold-backed petrol yuan does not require full renminbi convertibility to function, so it allows China to simultaneously retain control of its capital account and boost the internationalization of the yuan. And this means that China won't need to doom their economy like the United States they can continue exporting more than what they import and still enjoy a current account surplus and not a deficit. Now, gold is simply an excuse to tell other countries that, hey, there's a limit to how much we can screw up our currency. And if you don't trust us, you can redeem the yuan for gold. And that's why I believe the end goal of the yuan isn't really to take over the dollar as the prime reserve currency. The cons outweigh the pros for China. Being the world reserve currency will simply screw up China's economy. And if China follows the American playbook of deficit spending and consuming more than you produce, then sooner or later, they will also have to abandon the gold peg as well, right? China needs capital controls to ensure they don't lose control of its manufacturing advantage 
they need to control the yuan to a certain extent. So let's not think along the lines of dethroning the US dollar, but more of just pure de-dollarization. China's end goal is to just protect its economy and trade while forming a coalition that isn't dependent solely on the dollar, and they don't need to be the world reserve currency to accomplish that. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Is China really after the world reserve currency spot, or are they just trying to create an alternative to the dollar? Let me know in the comments below. Stay safe, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe as we navigate through these crazy times.